OK, we'll delve into that a little bit later, but let's just have a quick look at how the table looks for Group G. So, Manchester City, as you can see, top it quite comfortably. They are nine points at the top of the table, three clear of Dortmund, with Sevilla and Copenhagen level on a point. So, if Manchester City win next week in the reverse fixture against Copenhagen, they will secure qualification to the knockout stages. You know, a point might do it as well if other results go their way. Well, it has been another dominant display from Manchester City tonight. Haaland with a brace. They scored five in total. There were five changes to the City side going into tonight, but it didn't stop them from putting in another fantastic performance. We'll analyse it all after this. Well, it's been another incredible night of football for Manchester City. It was Haaland that bagged a brace. He's now scored 19 goals in 12 games. He's a Champions League top goal scorer. That man's happy, isn't he? Mares and Alvarez also got on the score sheet and they look like they're going to comfortably make it through to knockout stages of the Champions League. As for Chelsea, they were at home to AC Milan, the seven-time European champions. There were three goal scorers. Fafana was one of them. Aubameyang was the other. And you just saw Rhys James scored the third to give Graham Potter his first win in the Champions League as the Chelsea boss. Big night for him. And also, we watched Leipzig against Celtic. Celtic did get on the score sheet, but Leipzig scored three, and Cuckoo scored in the first half. Andre Silva bagged a brace in the second to leave Celtic bottom of Group F. And let's just give you a snapshot of how tonight looked in the Champions League. Well, I'll pick out a couple for you. Real Madrid, they relinquished top spot in La Liga at the weekend to Barcelona, but they haven't done so in Group F with that 2-1 win over Shakhtar. And if we look to Group H, Paris Saint-Germain drew with Benfica. Messi scored an absolute top-class goal, but Benfica equalised, so it was shared points in the end. And Juventus, well, they've been really struggling this season in the Champions League, and it was a good win for them over Maccabi. And it was also a brilliant win, wasn't it, for Manchester City tonight. As Owen just said before, it's becoming routine. And yes, I can see the shocked look on all your faces. Just look at those stats, Owen. Wow, 30 shots. I know, <laughs> incredible, that's isn't it? crazy. I mean, possession we're used to, but 30 shots, that's, that, even for City, that seems a lot. Yeah, I think, you know, there's players in there that... Obviously, haven't played as much. They're desperate to score. You could see it on Grealish's face. You could, you could see it on Alvarez's face. They, they all want goals. Uh, but those stats are just ridiculous. It's, it's what we expect, though. Yeah, because when you're saying that about Jack, I don't think he was forcing any issue. No. I don't think he was forcing shots when the world. He was actually uh, like, kind of unselfish in, in some moments, yeah, wasn't he? I think the decision making of all the forward players was, was spot on. At any given time, they were taking the opportunities when they were there, but they weren't forcing issues. So to, to get them numbers is. Crazy. <laughs> and we'll look at the goal shortly, but actually, what we didn't pick out in our pre show, because there's so much to talk about, was that midfield. Gundogan impressed you once again, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I thought, he, I, thought I was so impressed with him um, in the Manchester derby. We played at the base of midfield. Everybody thought Rodri would be yeah. a huge miss. That could, they thought it could be a potential weakness in the team. Well, he they? just, but, but he, he ran the game, Seema. And he's one of the smartest, most underrated players, I think, in, in the Premier League. Everybody loves him. He's the captain for a reason. Um, and again today, I thought he put on a masterclass and he makes the game, Julian, look so easy. Yeah, I've heard Pep speak about him and his level of IQ, football IQ is remarkable. And being able to play multiple positions and have a crazy impact. What, two seasons ago, he was top goal scorer. And then he's mm. played, obviously, as a defensive midfielder on, on Sunday and was remarkable as well. Do you know what I want to get into? This conversation about Erling Haaland. Look, he bagged a brace, didn't he? Mm. And then he was subbed. Mm just before the second half. So he was on course for a hat-trick. Crouchy, did that surprise you? Did that decision by Pep Guardiola surprise you? Do you know what Julian called it? Uh, <laughs> he said he's coming off. Um, I, we were disappointed. We? we were like, uh, you know, it's what we've come for. You know, we want to see Erling Haaland get another hat-trick, you know, do things that we've never seen before. But we have to say, Cole Palmer came on for him mm. and played fantastically well. You know, he, he, was, he was a joy to watch, but... Uh, can't sit here and say I didn't want yeah. Erling Haaland to get a hatchet. Yeah, from a striker's point of view, you're talking about what happened to you in regards yeah, to yeah, being exactly. on two goals. It did happen to me. I asked Rafa Benitez to keep me on. He took me off straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you make that decision, Julian? I don't know. It must be either something I have the weekend's game in mind, but you, you never know with Pepe. He rotates and makes the decisions best for the players and the team. And so they scored more goals in the second half. So obviously it didn't hinder their performance or the outcome of the game, but it's an overall Haaland will 
We'll get more minutes and we'll score more goals, I'm sure of it. Well, look, he's got 19 goals by October, what, 5th? <laughs> so I'm sure there was a couple more out there for him, and I'm sure he would have known that as well. But ultimately, they want to keep him fit and healthy. A lot, Pep mentioned it this week. He had a lot of injury issues at Dortmund. He's fit, he's healthy. <laughs> Pep can't believe it, and he just wants to keep it running. But uh, yeah, he does he's... have a break during the World Cup, though. I'm sure Harlan would have loved to stay out there, but mm. obviously, Crouchy makes a good point. Cole Palmer came on, gave him some reps, and he looked fantastic. But I'm sure a goal scorer will want to stay out there while there are so many goals still left to play. But in the end, the most important thing is the team, and that he stays healthy because he looks like he could take them to the Champions League, which is what they all desperately want. Now, we spoke in our pre-show a lot about Alvarez and Mares. How did they both fare for you, Julian? Oh, both did well. I've both got on the score sheet, so I'm sure they'll be happy with that. Good but for them confidence-wise. Yeah, of course, but again, it was never a question of their talent or contribution so far. It was just getting reps, as Owen said then. Uh, Mares obviously on the score sheet, but Alvarez, I thought he works tirelessly. Um, so in regards to him getting on the score sheet, I'm sure he's going to... Look at that, and finally, being in his first appearance in the Champions League. He's a special player, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, like we, we talked before the game that he'd, he'd probably walk into most Premier League teams. Uh, at the moment, he's finding it difficult to enter his team, but um, gave a great account of himself tonight. And, and as we say, every time he's picked, he seems to score and contribute. Let's look at 3 0. So at this point, they're 2 0 up, and then there was an own goal. It was a bit unfortunate, wasn't it, for Copenhagen? Well, I think they, they just. <laughs> they've been. Suffocated, but then the jolly and the other yeah. so deep they can't get out, and you just you're wary of that happening. Yeah, and he was exceptional as well. Gomez, this was what his second shot of the night. He had one last touch of the game, which was uh, outrageous technique as well. But in regards to this, yeah, fortunate enough the weight goes in. But as Crouch said before, Harlan's there. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was there. He was ready to pounce again. It's uh, it's not luck. He's in the right position every time. As you as you say, Gomez had a had a great game. Again. Yeah, he did. I don't know if anyone had a bad game in a City shirt. To be honest, team, even when they lose, I don't see City play poorly. Mm. They they don't, you know, they get unlucky with a penalty, a red card, or a counter attack. But they, the City never play poorly. You know, rarely ever does that happen. So they're just, um, they're special to watch. They really are. They play beautiful football. But now they're scoring fours and fives. It's, it's quite scary for everyone. How much confidence would it have given the likes of Riyad Mahrez that he did score today? Because they were awarded a penalty, he stepped up to the mark, and we know that he's not been in Pep's first 11 much this season, but he delivered when he was called upon. Yeah, again, I don't think he would question himself. He, he's been a, a present um, for, for City, especially in this competition. Yeah, the, it was never a question of, was it a penalty? I don't think VR checked it. And I think he takes penalties if he's on the pitch, regardless of who else. So if Haaland's on there at this moment in time, on two. I think Riyad still takes it, so in regards to that, it would do him no harm at all to score a goal. Um, but again, he's proven at this level. He made that look time. quite easy, didn't he? Yeah, well, he does. I mean, he, he was his top goal scorer last season. You know, he's, uh, he's a top, top player. I, I love watching him. Mm. He's one of my favourite players to watch, like snake hips. You can go past people with ease. He just hasn't managed to get in the side um, this season for whatever reason. So, Crouchy, talk us through 5-0. This is Alvarez's goal, and it's actually his first Champions League goal. What's that feeling like? Um, well, it's getting scored in the Champions League. It's yeah. the, obviously the pinnacle, you know. I think, um, listen, he's a, this is a, a player who's got goals in him. You know, we, as we said, I think Jack did fantastically well. And we were talking about, you know, him driving through centrally. Like, mm. you know, I enjoy that. Sometimes when he's out on the left, you, you know, you feel like he can't affect it as much. When he's driving through the middle like this, he can go past people. People can't foul him then yeah. in that position. Um, and Mares does, does fun. skips passing, picks out the pass, and, and Alvarez gets, gets what he deserves. That's a special goal, by the way. Yeah. I mean, from Jack to carry that ball with composure, um, the touch from Mares, and then the finish. I just thought that the goal was just a thing of beauty. Well, let's head straight back to Manchester and get some post-match reaction from Jack Grealish talking to Matt Smith. Jack, did you enjoy that? Yeah, no, I loved it. Um, Obviously, you know, playing in the Champions League at the Etihad, it's always a, a good feeling. And obviously, to to come away, you know, with a five 0 win, um, you know, three wins out of three now in our in our group, top of the league. So, um, yeah, no, it was a great night. From a personal point of view, it feels like you're kind of growing into life at Manchester City. A lot of touches, getting involved with everything. Yeah, no, I love. I'm loving it at the moment. You know, I think my last, you know, three or four games, um, you know, I've I've loved it. You know, I feel back to my. Back to myself, you know, playing with that sort of freedom and um, playing with a confidence. Um, you know, hopefully 
it would help, you know, if I got myself on the score sheet, I was desperate tonight, uh, especially in that second half. But, um, you know, it's all about enjoying it and, and winning. Um, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I was going to say, it looked like you were desperate for a goal. Then you decided, obviously, to create everyone else's goals. And then you went back to trying to score. It just isn't quite coming. Do you know what? It's just, you know, when the look's not with you, it's yeah. just... Did the third goal, was that an on goal? Yes. Ah, so I didn't get the assist for that then either. <laughs> um, no, that's what I mean. You know, I'm going through one of them patches at the moment where nothing will just fall. But, you know, like I said, you know, I'm enjoying it at the moment. Um, you know, I've played a lot of games recently, started a lot of games. So i obviously thankful to the manager for that. Um, and like you said, you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm playing football with a smile on my face and I feel like I'm... I'm really settling in, settling in now and playing with a confidence. And kind of ironic that it's not falling for you where everything the big fella touches. It's it's ridiculous at the moment, isn't it? I, I can hardly find words for it. Yeah, do you know what? I just, I say then, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, honestly. I've never, ever witnessed anything like it in my life. Um, just the way he, I swear, for the first and second goal, I think I was just laughing because I was just like, how? He's just always there. He's always finishing it. Um, and yeah, you know, it's a pleasure to play with him at the moment. When I was walking back, I think after one of the goals, maybe the third one, the keeper said something to me and I was like, what? And then he was like, this guy, he was like, he's not human. And I was like, I was like, bro, no, I was like, you're telling me? Um, yeah, no, he's unbelievable, honestly. He's a pleasure to play with. Um, he's so he's so humble. He's great around the place. And that ain't me just, you know, bigging him up. That's the God's honest truth. Um, and hopefully, you know, he can carry on this form and, and fire us to glory. Well played yourself, thank you very Cheers. much. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. I don't think anyone watching that interview could not help but smile. He was so honest and so brilliant. He's so likeable as well. Oh, 100%. And again, we've seen it in his early parts of his career, especially for England, but just seeing him talk so openly and so freely. And like you said, playing and interviewing with a smile on his face. I know Jack personally, and to see him like that, he loves football more than, more than most. So to see him performing the way he is, I'm pleased for him. And it does feel like it's just a matter of time until the goals start coming for him. Yeah, they'll come. I think he had some moments today where he probably could have shot, and I think he actually did the unselfish thing and he passed. So I think Pep will probably appreciate that. You know, he just... I think the, thing, the one thing I'd notice is he's doing things a, a tiny bit quicker. He's making his mind up a bit quicker. You know, he's pulling the trigger when he needs to. Um, he's getting it, Couch, you mentioned. He's running centrally. Um, where sometimes when he runs out here, when he runs out wide, he's a bit limited. When he comes inside, the whole pitch opens up. He can play one twos, he's great at it. And I think his whole, his whole game looks like when he was cruising at Villa Crouch here. Yeah, because yeah, when he goes into those central areas, you can't touch him. Like, out wide and deep, people like to foul him and bring him down. You get him off the ball. But as soon as he runs into those central areas, you can't touch him. He's, people are you know, attracted to, to, to him. And he can, that's when he can slip players in in real dangerous positions. So. I just feel like if he can pick it up more centrally, he can definitely get himself on the score sheet and, and more assists. And it's obvious that he he talked about his numbers there. He was worried about the stat with the yeah. with the assist. You know, he's obviously playing on his mind. But if he continues to play the way he is, that that will, that will come. And surely it's good news for England seeing him play like this. Yeah, of course. Listen, England don't struggle in, in them wide areas. They've got a talent in abundance. But for Jack personally, obviously he's going to judge himself on his numbers, which most players do. But his impact overall and his decision making was exceptional tonight. Okay, let's head straight back to City and hear from Riyad Mahrez speaking to Matt Smith. Riyad, what's that? Kind of game like to play in? No, it's good. It's always good to play Champions League games, you know. It was uh, not easy at the start. We made it easy by scoring uh, early on, and I think we controlled the game really well. Yeah. I mean, for a forward player like you that likes to touch the ball, likes to create, likes to find space, it's, yeah, it's like it, a training session, no? No. <laughs> I'm not going to say this, but it's good when we have the ball and we're on the opposite side. And, um, uh, the opposite box of the opponent, so we play and we try to create chances uh, like we always do, you know. And um, the score is is deserved, and I think uh, it's good for the next game. Yeah. Nice to get a goal. Yeah, nice to get a goal. Nice to to score goals and to have the team to win. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of competition in your part of the pitch, isn't there? There's a lot of good yeah, players. Yeah, of course, always been, always been. Um, here five years. Maybe it was more competition before than now, but uh, it's good, it's good. Well, it is a good thing, isn't it? When there's competition for places, it makes a player raise their game. Well, he's probably got the best first touch in the Premier League, so, <laughs> you know, I think everybody loves watching him play. He was their top scorer last season, so he's going to play. I think the thing is, Phil Foden's just been that good, and Erling Haaland's been obviously 
that good as well. So these guys are going to play, but Riyad Mahrez, is, I still think he's one of the best. Yeah, without doubt. Like I say, it's, it's a personal favourite. I just love the way he plays, enjoy watching him. Um, but for whatever reason, yeah, he's not, not been able to get in the side, but uh, maybe it's the, the form of the others. Do you think he did enough tonight to make Pep think about his starting eleven? I don't think anyone does that. I think Haaland obviously starts, but in regards to what Pep believes is the best eleven to play against Southampton on the weekend, he'll decide that in the coming days. I don't think he picks based on previous teams. If that was the case, Kevin De Bruyne would never miss a game, would he? And Haaland wouldn't be coming off at half-time. So in regards to Pep's selection, I think he picks it on the base of training and what the players and how they recover. Right, it is time for a break, after which we will bring you more reaction on another five-star performance from Manchester City. Five goals scored and there is no doubt that that man there, Pep Guardiola, is delighted. He's speaking to Matt Smith straight after the break. is pointed to the spot. Lovely penalty. It's Grealish carries on and finds Mares. And We've talked about the players, but what about that man there, Pep Guardiola? Only Sir Alex Ferguson and Carlo Ancelotti have won more Champions League games than Pep Guardiola. I just wonder how he reflects on his team's performance tonight. Well, let's find out. Here he is speaking to Matt Smith. Um, Pep, <coughs> making a nice habit of fast starts. That helps. Sorry? The fast starts to the games. Make, that really helps. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Did it surprise you how quickly your team got control of the game? Well, the reason why these years we were a little consistent, consistent, consistent and fighting for everything is after we win the derby, 6-3, a lot of compliments. We were able to, to play a Champions League game, a team like Copenhagen, and uh, play the way we played. Like, uh, it was, uh, of course, the result is excellent, but especially the way we played. was really, really impressed the way we we. We attack a so deep, deep uh, uh, squad. So, yeah, uh, really, really, really satisfied. And again, incredible compliment to the players. Because we talked even yesterday about no complacency. You won't allow that. The players won't allow that. Mm. There was a hunger. Yeah, even in 3 4 nil tonight, it's just relentless. Yeah, we, we play really good in, in all departments. Defensively, offensively, everybody focus and, and uh, many, many players playing a high, high level. It's the only way. So everybody's involved and everybody has to perform well to, to, to help the team and, and try to, yeah, to win game by game. I presume you only took your striker off because, not because of injury, just to rest him, I presume. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the game was in 3-0 and he played a lot of minutes yeah. and of course there are another ones. It's good for the young players played, for um, Cole Palmer and because he's an excellent player. So. That's why and be a rest for the next game. Yeah. I just spoke to Jack. He's, he's pretty desperate to get on the Harling score sheet, to get on the train with Holland and score a goal himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he played unbelievable, mm. Jack. Uh, next step is a, is a score goal. Yes, yes. And um, three points next week, which I know you won't take for granted, but you get the job done. You can relax somewhat with the last two games. Well, now Southampton. OK. And like, uh, we cannot forget, last season we could not beat them. So mm. uh, we're going to Southampton, and after one week later, we're going to be there. That will be completely different. They had to put in the mindset that is a new game, and uh, hopefully they cannot believe or think like, uh, yeah, like we, what we have done today is going to happen next game. Because after after Dortmund win the, his game in Sevilla, uh, I had the feeling that. Uh, uh, we have to win all the games to be finish first in the in the group stage. Always something to work for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Smiles all around for Pep Guardiola, and of course he's smiling because his team were just fantastic tonight. And look at those numbers for Erling Haaland. He is just going to keep breaking records and creating his own Owen if he carry on like this. I mean, you think about Messi, Lewandowski, and Van Nistelrooy, some of the greatest we've ever seen still doing their craft. He's got half the amount of time. I mean, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Credit to him. You know, Crouchy mentioned before, his body of work in Molde and then in Salzburg and then in Dortmund and Norway, even though he's only 22, he just scores goals for fun. And he's doing that at the highest level in the Champions League. 
what happened to one in two, Owen? Like when that was <laughs> <laughs> one in two enough. was a good. Doesn't that enough? That was a good record, record wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I don't know if he touches Messi and Ronaldo in terms of total goals throughout his career, but I, I definitely believe he. He finishes his career as all-time Champions League goal scorer. Is, is he the missing piece, though? Like, I know, obviously, he's hit the ground running here. You know, City dominate every game they play in. Even when they lose or draw, they still dominate the game, possession-wise. Is he the missing piece for the, for the Champions League? Time will tell. I hope so. Um, but it looks like it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks like it. You wouldn't bet against it now, but you, you don't know. I, I'm not gauging them in the greatest respect on a Copenhagen yeah, yeah. three or group stages. It's like, when you get to the latter stages, oh, and you know, it's... It's different experience. You've been to the final yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it comes with something else. So we've seen him dominate Real Madrid last year and for, what was that, two games, but oh, apart from six minutes and all of a sudden yeah. you're out. So it, there's no given right to win this competition. Well, it's, he's a top scorer in the Champions League, top scorer in the Premier League. I mean, it's hard to see them not going all the way in the Champions League with him leading the line. Well, they've gone, you know, one step... Um, Close with, you know, and just missing that, that final step. And the margins are fine. Pep always says it, and I agree with him. I think Joey makes a good point. Haaland, in those moments where you need a goal, he, he's probably going to get it for you. Um, so they're definitely a lot closer. The best team in the Premier League just got a lot better with one of the best strikers in the world. We talked about the fact that Pep Guardiola brought him off at halftime and brought on Cole Palmer. What did you like about Cole Palmer's performance tonight? Well, first, I was disappointed Harlan came off. You know, we wanted to see him get that hat trick. But this boy ignited yeah. the game. I, I, you know, it's great to see young players play with such confidence. I think, you know, they seem to be bred differently now. You know, players just come into Champions League games like they've been there for years. And um, his performance, you know, the way he's balanced, I know, obviously, Jolie, and you've worked with him at under yeah. 21 level. Like, how, how good is he? He's an exceptional talent. Um, I, I wouldn't say in comparison to Phil, he's definitely similar to Riyad, the way he moves. Obviously, left footed, he's, he's tall, he's, he's over six foot, but his balance and his ability to just change direction at full pace is, is remarkable. And I just wonder how much, Owen, will this player learn at such a young age, the age of 20, with that team around him? He's so silky. Mm. That's hard to teach, to be that in control with that composure, that skill, and still have your balance, you know, for such a quite a big winger. So. I thought he looked fat. He looked like a but that's 50 million pound he, player there. He, he came on and, and played in midfield. Like his ability to play multiple positions and impact the game is crazy. Like uh, in terms of talent, he's right up there. Uh, it's just whether he can mirror that together and then put in uh, collective performances. And, and I talk about the fact he has the great players around him, but he has a top class coach as well. How good could he be? Well, that, I mean, listen, you know, he's in the right place. We see Foden and um, you know, the way he's blossomed under Pep Guardiola. Uh, this will be, be similar for him. Obviously, the only issue is game time. Um, will he get enough game time? Will he have to go out potentially on loan or, or, or is he good enough to force his way in there? Well, it's interesting you say that because we had this exact conversation about Foden, didn't we? Probably, what, a year or so ago where we were like, should he go out somewhere mm. on loan and get more game time? But, you know, it, it's worked out very well for him staying at City. Well, Jolie made a great point about, you know, Cole Palmer probably the best thing to do is stay within this team the way that they play. Yeah, not every player is suited for every team. Just because he's exceptional talent doesn't mean that style's going to suit him. And for me, for him to stay there, train with the best players, work with the best coach, to, to kind of learn his, his trade, because he's only going to receive the ball in certain areas for Man City. He's not going to have to track back and, and learn that side of the game for, like he would do for other teams, but that, and that may hinder his development. It feels like this team are just only going to get better. They've got Southampton coming up, they've got Copenhagen, and then they've got Liverpool. Are you looking forward to watching that one? Well, I think Liverpool will be worried, you know, with Manchester City coming. The way that they're playing, they're flying. They just look unbeatable. OK, well, if you haven't quite had your fix of European football, don't worry, it continues tomorrow night in the Europa League, fresh off the back of that North London derby win. Premier League leaders Arsenal face Bodo Glimt at the Emirates. Manchester United are in Cyprus as they take on Ammonia Nicosia. And as for the Europa Conference League, West Ham will travel to Belgium where they play Anderlecht. And don't forget, Hearts are at home to Fiorentina. And our coverage starts at 7.30 on BT Sport 3. And don't forget that Champions League tonight We'll follow this programme on BT Sport 2. Jake and the team there to discuss all the key talking points from match day three. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure watching the game with you. We've watched another fantastic performance from Manchester City and we'll see you next week for more of the same.